The next two lectures will be by Professor Jack Sweat. He is professor in the Department of Chemistry, Biochemistry and Physics at the University of Quebec, Trio Rivers. Uh, this is in Quebec, Canada. Professor Jack, he is well known for his work. He is a renowned scientist working in the field of metal hydrides. Hello, everybody. My name is Jacques Huot. I'm a professor at the University of Quebec at Rivière and also member of the Hydrogen Research Institute. Uh, today, uh, we will talk about uh, tailoring metal hydride for practical application. Uh, this is in two parts. The first part will be nanostructure in general, and the second part will be on the effect of uh, uh, nanocrystalline structure on the capacity of metal hydride and also some other method to get uh, nanostructure materials. So just a quick, uh, a quick uh, recap on uh, what our metal hydride, you could consider metal hydride to be like a kind of hydrogen sponge. So in a metal hydride, you have a chemical bond with the metal atom and the absorption is an exothermic reaction and the desorption is an endothermic reaction. So to uh, give you some idea of uh, uh, the difference but uh, with metal hydride uh, uh, with respect to the other ways to uh, store hydrogen. So if you store hydrogen as a gaseous form at one bar at room temperature, uh, you see that uh, the uh, the volumetric capacity is, is quite low. Uh, in order to increase that, you have to increase the pressure. So if you go to 150 bar, you have a much better uh, volumetric capacity. Uh, and uh, if you are using liquid hydrogen, so usually if you you want to transport a huge quantity of hydrogen, liquid hydrogen, in my opinion, li liquid hydrogen is the best way. Uh, of course, it's at uh, low temperature, at 20K, but you see that uh, the, the volumetric capacity is, uh, is quite good. But uh, you see for metal hydride here, you have a high temperature metal hydride and you have a low temperature metal hydride. So this metal hydride is working at room temperature. This one is working at uh, at least 200, 300 degree, 350 degree C. And uh, you see that actually it's a, it's a little, little bit counterintuitive, but you see that the volumetric capacity of hydrogen is higher in a metal hydride than in a liquid. So uh, the hydrogen atoms are more compact in a metal hydride than in a liquid. Uh, it's counterintuitive, but this makes uh, one of, this is one of the best advantage of metal hydride is that hydrogen is compact so your tank will be very small but uh, the disadvantage as you see here is that the gravimetric density is uh, quite low so here this means that you only have 7.7 uh, weight percent of hydrogen uh, in, a, in a metal hydride tank made of uh, magnesium hydride okay and the rest is just the weight of magnesium. And for lanthanum nickel 5, it's even worse. It's only 1.4%. So that's one of the big disadvantage of metal hydride. So the advantage and the disadvantage, well, you see that uh, uh, for um, metal hydride, the advantage, as we said, it's a uh, high volumetric density. It could work at low pressure, but uh, and uh, the reaction of desorption is endothermic. So why I list it as an advantage is because if you have uh, hydrogen metal hydride tank, 
in your car and you have an accident and uh, the, the, the tank is ruptured and you have hydrogen getting out and hydrogen is uh, taking fire. So then uh, it will eat up the tank. But as the tank is eating up, it will desorb hydrogen. But as it desorb hydrogen, uh, because the reaction is endothermic, it will have a tendency to cool itself. So it will kill the reaction by itself. So this is inherently uh, safe. Uh, the disadvantage is uh, you have a, usually you have a high temperature of operation. If you want to have a good capacity, for example, with magnesium hydride, you have to work at high temperature, more than 300 degrees C. Uh, usually the hydrogen sorption kinetic, hydrogenation, dehydrogenation is relatively slow. Uh, the cost, uh, depending on the material, it could be expensive. And again, you have to consider not only the cost of the raw material, the cost of the uh, alloy, but also you have to consider the cost of, you know, uh, loading uh, the uh, the alloy with hydrogen and putting that in the in the tank and so on. So uh, the process cost could be quite expensive. So you have to take that into account and the pyrophoricity because uh, metal hydride after many cycles of hydrogenation dehydrogenation they will turn into very very small powder and a small any powder that is that very very small could be pyrophoric and also for metal hydride because they 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 react with hydrogen so it means that they could react with uh, oxygen also so you could have problem of uh, pyrophoricity. So very quickly, uh, just the, the step for uh, uh, forming hydrogen, uh, metal hydride. So uh, first you have hydrogen in gas phase and this hydrogen has to be split into proton, two hydrogen uh, before entering because on a metal hydride, what is stored is not a molecule H2, but it's a proton. It's the it's the hydrogen atom. Okay, so first you have to break this uh, this molecule. After that, the uh, the hydrogen has to break. You usually you have a small oxide layer on the surface of your alloy, so it has to break this oxide layer, and uh, and. For hydrogen, first you have to be in adsorption. So you adsorb on the surface and then it, it split in two and, it, uh, um, and then the proton will enter the hydrogen, uh, the, the metal. And uh, first it will form in solid solution. So it will just go into the metal structure. But as the pressure of the uh, of the gas is increasing then the concentration of hydrogen in your uh, metal will increase up until you you nucleate the metal hydride phase and uh, in that phase then the hydrogen will go on specific site depending on the crystal structure it could be on the octahedral or tetrahedral site and you have a lattice expansion it could be up to 30% of expansion of your lattice, of your metal. So that's the thermodynamic. So you have your metal and uh, this is the, the pressure of hydrogen. This is the capacity of hydrogen. So it's the number of hydrogen atom over the number of metallic atom. And uh, as you start you increase the pressure, hydrogen will enter in solid solution in your metal up until you reach that point. At that point, uh, you start to nucleate the metal hydride phase. Okay, so it usually it has an, a, a different uh, crystal structure. And now that you have a new phase in your system by the law of Gibbs, so if you have a new phase, it means that you are losing a degree of liberty. So if you are losing a degree of liberty, it means that you could, the capacity could increase even if the pressure doesn't increase. Because as the pressure try to go up, 
you have more hydrogen that will go into uh, the metal hydride okay that will form the metal hydride so on this plateau you go from 100 percent metal and zero percent hydride up to here where you have 100 percent metal hydride and zero percent uh, metal and here it's 50 50 okay so you have the transformation along that plateau you have the transformation from the metallic state to the metal hydride state and once all the your material all your alloy is um, on a metal hydride state then uh, you are losing one phase you, you are losing the metal phase so you are gaining one degree of liberty and then to increase uh, the capacity the pressure has to increase and here hydrogen will enter in solid solution and the metal hydride so and of course this is a this is a standard um, phase transition so depending on the temperature the, the 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 plateau pressure will change okay so you could plot the logarithm of the plateau pressure as a function of one over t and uh, the slope will give you the uh, enthalpy of the reaction and the ordinate at the origin will give you the uh, entropy of your reaction so one advantage of the metal hydride is that you it could span a large range of application from portable and mobile up to something as big as the fuel cell submarine so i don't think uh, if you have like a, a few a micro fuel cell with a smartphone uh, you could not store hydrogen in a liquid phase it doesn't make sense you could not have a, a, a reservoir at 20k in your pocket and uh, the same thing with uh, pressure you could not have a, 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 a small tank at high pressure because the the amount of hydrogen that you need for this is very very small so uh, the tank will be almost as big and as heavy as the device itself so it doesn't make sense so um, and uh, so the same thing up to up to the submarine for so the for the the submarine uh, well what is important for them is space they don't have a lot of space so they need something that will store hydrogen that will not take space and uh, for them weight is not a problem okay it could be heavy it doesn't matter for a submarine so this is why the, the choice of storing hydrogen for a fuel cell submarine is metal hydride so metal hydride for practical application so presently all known metal hydride suffers some limitation for practical application either they are too expensive or the capacity is too low or they lose capacity during cycling or the temperature and the pressure of operation is not right for your application so most of the time the, the metal hydride are not ideally suited for uh, pre for practical application right now so uh, the goal is to modify this and to try to find metal hydride that will really uh, uh, meet uh, the specification for practical application so how to solve this uh, limitation well we could try we are trying to find new alloy or we could modify existing alloy and nano sizing is a way to obtain new alloy and also to modify the existing alloy so you could uh, the existing alloy as we will see if the if you have a, a, a conventional alloy but uh, you make it in the nano crystalline uh, uh, dimension then uh, the, the the characteristic will change a little bit so it could make your alloy attractive for practical application so how to do uh, nano structure in metal hydride well there is two ways as for any any metal so it's either bottom up or top down so bottom up is that you construct the nano crystalline alloy directly so you could do that by cold vapor deposition thin film and so on so you start and you 
you more or less you assemble uh, atom per atom until you get your nano your nano crystal. Um, but in my opinion, this is not so suitable for scaling up. You could not produce ton of material with this. But uh, these are techniques that are very interesting from a fundamental point of view because you could really control uh, the size of your uh, of your material and also the, the the chemistry and so on. So you have more control on your uh, on your uh, sample and uh, it makes uh, the um, uh, the understanding and it makes uh, the, the the study much easier. Okay, so these are interesting uh, technique, but uh, we will not discuss them uh, in this course. So what we will discuss is the top down. So you start from a polycrystalline material and you reduce its crystallite size. So this is what we will study in this course. So there are many ways to do that. You could do that by bone milling, cold rolling, a cold channel, angular pressing, high pressure torsion, and so on. So we will discuss of some of them in this course. So nanostructure metal hydride. So getting a, a, a nanostructure metal, metal hydride could solve some of the practical problem. For example, the kinetics or the first hydrogenation. So we could make the first hydrogenation much faster and you could make the, the alloy much easier to cycle. So after many cycle of hydrogenation, the hydrogenation, you will not lose so much capacity. So what is the definition of a nanocrystalline material? Well, the classical definition is that your crystallite size should be less than 100 nanometer. So the crystallite size is the coherent domain of your crystal, okay? Um, and uh, in a nanocrystalline material, you have a lot of defect. So these defects could act as a activation uh, nucleation site. So they will lower the activation barrier. So if you have more nucleation site, your kinetic will be faster. And uh, also depending on the size of your grain boundary and the size of your, na of your uh, nanocrystallite, uh, you could have a grain boundary could could make up to 30 percent of your of your material, and this grain boundary could serve as a hydrogen pathway. So hydrogen could could go through this grain boundary to reach your nanocrystalline material, and all of this will make that uh, the the kinetic will be much faster in a nanocrystalline material compared to a polycrystalline material. So today we will look uh, mainly at uh, ball milling to prepare metal hydride. This is the this is the technique that is used by most of the researcher in the in the field of metal hydride. So uh, almost all of them are using uh, ball milling to get a nanocrystalline structure. And as we saw uh, by ball milling, you could get defect. You will have, so that will increase the nucleation site. Uh, you could have formation of the meta metastable phase. This is a common feature of uh, ball milling. So not only in metal hydride, but also in other type of material. Usually, you could get a metastable phase, a high pressure, high temperature phase, just by ball milling at room temperature. Of course, you could synthesize nanocomposites, so you could mix two alloy, and you, you you could get a nanocomposite. Usually, when you do ball milling, the particle are of the order of the micron, but the crystallite are order of nanometer. So you have to be careful when we talk about nanocrystalline material. It doesn't necessarily mean that the particle are nanocrystalline size. It's the crystallite that are uh, nano size, okay? Uh, and uh, sometimes in the literature you see people are talking about grain size, but I don't like to use this word because for some people grain may mean particle, and for some other people grain may mean crystallite. So I prefer to talk about particle and crystallite. 
and then it's clear for everybody. So if you talk about particle, that's a particle, okay? So that particle could be of the order of micron, but it's made of many, many smaller crystallite, small crystallite of the order of uh, nanometer. And of course, by ball milling, you could increase the specific surface area. So ball milling very schematically. So in ball milling, you have a crucible and you put um, your raw material in form of powder and you have uh, balls that are made of stainless steel, hardened stainless steel or uh, tungsten carbide or some other material. Uh, you select the material depending on what you want to ball mill and you shake this um, crucible and, and then you will have a collision between two particles or between a particle and the wall of your crucible. And of course, if you have powder in your crucible, then you will have powder that is trapped between two balls or between a ball and a wall. So when the two balls collide, you have the, 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 your powder that, was the, that is here will be uh, broken. Okay, so you will have, a, or they could be cold work, uh, a cold weld, okay, to, together. The two particles could be cold weld with the force of the impact of the two balls. So it's a rep repetition of fracture, cold welding, fracture, cold welding, and so on. And after you repeat that many, many times, you will have a nanostructure material. So here to, today I will uh, show you uh, milling of magnesium hydride. Magnesium hydride, well, it's a well-known hydride. It has a high capacity, 7.68%, and it's relatively low cost because it's abundant in the earth crust. The disadvantage is that uh, it has a high temperature of operation, more than 300 degrees C. Usually the first hydrogenation is very difficult and also the kinetic is relatively uh, slow, okay? So uh, what I will show you today is that uh, the ball milling of uh, commercial magnesium hydride that we ball mill in a high energy mill, milling machine. So this is the powder before milling and after milling 20 hours. So, uh, you see, and the scale is not the same. Here, this is 30 micron. Here, it's a 7.5 micron. So you see that before milling, uh, the, 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 the particles are like a smooth, okay? The surface is smooth. But you see here, after milling, the particles are smaller because this is only 7.5. But these are the big one. I have smaller one here. So you have a strong reduction of uh, particle size. And also you see that, for example, this particle is an agglomeration of smaller particle. So sometimes by ball milling, you will break particle, but also you will tend to fuse particle together. Okay. And uh, you see that the specific surface area here was only 1.2 square meter per gram. And by ball milling, you increase it all, all, almost by a factor of 10 but it's still not a very high specific surface area. So you increase a specific surface area by, the, by a, an order of magnitude, but it's still not uh, very, very high like you see in carbon nanotube or uh, you know um, uh, graphite or so on, where you have a hundred and thousand square meter per gram. So this is the powder diffraction. Uh, the on mill is here, and after two hours, you see that the break peak are getting broad. So that means that it's a nanocrystalline nano structure, and uh, you see that these peak are appearing. Okay, that uh, I, we did not have these peak in the on mill, and the on, the mill one you have these peak. Well, these peak actually are this phase. So this is a metastable phase of magnesium hydride. So the, 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 the normal phase is the beta phase, that's the room temperature phase, but the gamma phase is the high temperature, high pressure phase. And you see that you could, you could synthesize it just by bone milling at uh, room temperature. 
So if you look at, uh, if you do a Ritval refinement, if you analyze this pattern, then you see that uh, after milling, you have 74% uh, of magnesium hydride and 18% of the uh, of the metastable phase of magnesium hydride. And you see a reduction of the chrysalide size. So now it's only of the order of 10, 10 nanometer. So uh, while before it was uh, polycrystalline, so it was more than uh, 100 uh, nanometer. So if we look at the uh, hydrogenation characteristic, so you see, so this is on mill is the fill mar mark and mill is the hollow mark. So this is the on mill, this one, this one, and this one. And uh, so you see, for example, at uh, uh, 573 degree K, uh, the on mill one is really not desorbing. It doesn't want to desorb. But at the same temperature for the mill one, you see it started to desorb. And uh, if we look at uh, 623 uh, K, so 350 degrees C, so this is the desorption of the on mill one. And you see the mill one is here. It's much, much faster. It's totally desorbed in uh, 800 seconds. So, uh, about 12 minutes while here after half an hour it's still not fully desorbed and you see even the on mill one at 648 it's still slower than the mill one at 623 so you see that ball milling just getting a nanocrystalline structure uh, drastically improved the um, uh, the kinetic of the de the desorption kinetic and also the hydrogenation kinetic. So you have the same thing here. So for example, at uh, 573, so this is the absorption. And uh, after um, half an hour, uh, it's not fully absorbed. And you see that this one is fully absorbed about in a, uh, maybe 12 minutes, 800 seconds. Okay, it's, it's fully filled. So uh, you see again that uh, nanocrystalline makes the hydrogenation and the hydrogenation much faster. But uh, this is the thermodynamics. So this is uh, the pressure composition isotherm as we saw in uh, one of the first slide. So this is the uh, on mill one. So the on mill one, you have your plateau as we saw uh, in the first slide. And uh, then uh, you have, so this is the absorption. And after that, you have the desorption and you have a plateau again. So the plateau on absorption and desorption are usually not at the same position. This is what we call hysteresis. But uh, this hysteresis depends on many factors, but also on the kinetic. So you see that this is not a flat plateau because here, in principle, at this point should be uh, a stable point. Okay, so uh, you, you, you should have equilibrium at this point. But how do you define equilibrium? You define equilibrium when the pressure doesn't change. Okay, so you expose your uh, material to uh, that pressure and then you see that the material doesn't absorb hydrogen anymore. So you say, well, this is on uh, equilibrium. But uh, if, the, if the kinetic is very, very slow, then the, the kinetic is so slow that your apparatus think that you reach equilibrium when actually it's not at, at equilibrium. So this is due to the very slow kinetic. But as we saw, when you do ball milling and you get a nanocrystalline structure, the kinetic is much faster and you see that your plateau now is flat, okay? Because the kinetic is faster and also this plateau uh, move up to here. So the hysteresis is much less. And uh, because you could see here for the on mill one, you see that it start to bend here, but the kinetic is so slow that it, it doesn't reach uh, 
the equilibrium point okay so uh, and so this is why this plateau is lower so this is not due to thermodynamics this is due only to kinetic okay so but you see that you basically do not change the the the, the, the thermodynamics and uh, you just change a kinetic and you see a small reduction of capacity here after ball milling. So this is confirmed by uh, calorimetry. So this is under hydrogen pressure. So that was under two bar of hydrogen. So if you put your magnesium hydride and you start to uh, increase the temperature, at one point it will desorb, and that gives you that peak. And that's the 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 temperature of the peak okay and if you ball mill then uh, you reduce that temperature because the kinetic is faster okay and uh, you notice that here i have only one peak and here i have two peaks but you remember that when the ball mill material we had the two phase we had the gamma phase and the beta phase so that's why i have two peaks here now one of them is the desorption of the gamma phase and the other one is the desorption of the beta phase here i just have the beta phase but you see a reduction of that of that uh, temperature uh, peak so um, uh, so it means that i have a reduction of the activation energy so we could measure that and uh, what we measured that for the on mill for this one the activation energy was 156 kilojoule per mole while for the mill one it was 120 so that's one of the reasons why the kinetic is faster because the activation energy is lower so the conclusion for my, for the magnesium hydride so uh, by ball milling we found that uh, you could have uh, nanocrystalline material with a, a metastable phase and after ball milling the particle were still of the order of uh, micron but much smaller than uh, before milling and uh, you have a tenfold increase in the specific surface area uh, you have a faster hydrogen hydrogenation and dehydrogenation and a reduction of the activation energy so this improved the kinetics and also because we have defect and the small particle size and, and the increase of the specific surface area so these are all features that will make your kinetic faster okay so reduction of activation energy smaller size defect and so on so but we also saw that intensive milling does not alter the thermodynamic properties of magnesium hydride uh, and this is a common feature in the nanocrystalline material. Usually, you do not change the thermodynamic on, unless you're going to very, very low, very, very small uh, crystallite size. So, for example, for magnesium hydride, you have to go to uh, the, the thermodynamic starts to change at about seven nanometer, and just a little bit in order to have a good change of thermodynamics you have to reach like uh, two or three nanometer and this is not the type of size that we get by bone milling usually so it's much much uh, too small so in principle by thermodynamic by bone milling usually you do not change the thermodynamics so with this this will conclude this uh, part one and uh, in part two we will see uh, so here we mainly see the effect on uh, kinetics but in part two we will see the effect on capacity and also we'll see some other ways to make uh, nanocrystalline material metal hydride so thank you very much for your attention